What's up guys, it's your boy H Dog and I'm back with another video. And recently Game Informer sat down with former Bioware developer James Olin, who was a 22 year veteran with the company. If you want to read the full interview, a link will be in the description box to check it out. Um Game Informer asked with you taking more of a hands-on creative role with Anthem, why leave in the middle of development? Was your role winding down as the game was ramping towards release? James said, quote, I had stepped in to help out on parts of Anthem, but my role was not a huge one. I was working on as the narrative director for a period of time, about six months, but then I handed off most of the leadership to Kathleen Rootsart, who's the lead writer there. I just wasn't really in the place where I was like, do I want to go back doing administrative director of design type of things? I wasn't. I was in a place where I needed to go back to being focused on doing creative stuff. <clears throat> Seems like James wanted a break instead of hopping back into an administration role, which I wouldn't blame him as long as he's been with Bioware. Game Informer went on to ask, Quote, we talked about this several years ago when Aaron Flynn was in charge, but now that he's gone and there's been another wave of de departures at Bioware, would you say the culture is still intact? James said, quote, I think the culture is still there. It is very much a culture of humility and a culture of excellence. A lot of people who lead the studio grew up under Ray and Greg. Casey Hudson and Mark Darrow are examples. They have been keeping that culture alive. One of the lines we always used on people that were coming out of Bioware was quality in the workplace, quality in the product. And that we had to balance those two things. That's still very true. It's a good place to work that doesn't burn out as people, but at the same time, it's a place that focuses on creating the highest quality games possible and then Bioware's and then Bioware had to evolve because games are getting more expensive and teams are getting larger and larger so it's been difficult but I think the studio's leaders have done a great job and Flynn did a great job and Casey's done a great job Casey's amazing I've always loved working with him. If I had a chance to work with him in the future, I'll definitely do it. It's good to know that the culture is still intact at Bioware, despite the growth in size of the company over the years. Game Informer asked, quote, given that the culture is intact and the studio is still working on, the, on these big, amazing projects, to what do you attribute the talent bleed at Bioware? James said, quote, It's certainly been a steady stream of veteran developers leaving for a while now. When you've been at a studio for a long time, sometimes you just want to strike out on your own and do your own thing. The fact is, with bigger and bigger games, people are working with larger and larger teams, working on the development of Star Wars The Old Republic. I was the game director, which meant I had the most power. But I often felt like I was the captain of the Titanic and I could just steer it a tiny, teeny tiny bit if I put all my efforts into it. A lot of people who have been leaving that were there for 10, 15 or more years and sometimes you just need to change. Other times people want to get more, get back to getting their hands dirty with creative and it's really difficult to do that when you're on a big team of 1,000 people and you're supposed to be delivering hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. There's a lot of responsibility there that gets kind of in the way of your ability to really get into the creative process. For me personally, it's working on a book. It's really a break from being in the industry that I'm going to take for I don't know how long, maybe a year, maybe less, maybe more, but it's a chance to just not have all that responsibility and really just be creative do what I want to do feel a little more like back in the Baldur's Gate days when the team was 40 people in size instead of what it is now and when the expectations were I remember the expectations for Baldur's Gate one was maybe we sold half as much as Fallout maybe we would sell 100,000 copies and get to do more games so it was a lot different this 
could explain the reason we have seen so much talent leave Bioware simply because they want a change of scenery and not because the developer is in a dire situation kind of like if you've been working at a regular day job for years and you want to branch out and do something new Game Informer went on to ask quote went on to say quote anthem shooting felt really good it was really encouraged by that but coming out of e3 there's a this sense amongst a particular segment of the bioware community that this game isn't for them they want a more classic bioware game with branching conversations romance etc did you make all the choice to move away from that consciously or was that just how the project evolved over time james responded I think one of the things about Bioware has been really good at it, which has allowed it to survive more than two decades, is taking risks and trying new and different things. Anthem has been doing different things differently than the traditional model than anything you've seen from Dragon Age or Mass Effect back to the Baldur's Gate part of being systems based. Anthem's different from that then again Neverwinter Nights was quite a bit different when it came out in 2002 and obviously Star Wars The Old Republic was quite a bit different when it came out in 2011. The fact that Bioware is doing something different with Anthem doesn't mean that Bioware is going to do games that skew towards more the traditional style that Bioware is known for. It's just a chance to do something a little different. It was driven by Bioware itself, the team. I know there's a lot of the conspiracy theories that EA is one is the one behind it, but that's never been the case. Bioware's always had a lot of control over the kind of games it makes. The last statement, though, reassured and puts to bed any thoughts that EA has any say so in the games they make. And Bioware has always had creative freedom over the creative process of their games, and that it's okay to take risks. A good example is Fallout 76, an online only Fallout game which is a first for the Fallout series and what fans would call a risk taker. Game Informer went on to ask, speaking of conspiracy theories, one of the things that you see float around on the internet right now is that due to Andromeda underwhelming and EA's reputation of having an itchy trigger finger when it comes to studio closures. Bioware will be shuttered if Anthem isn't a hit. Is there any sense internally among the staff that this is the level of pressure on the studio at this point? James answered no. The more success that a studio has, the more freedom and resources that it has. So obviously Bioware wants to have success with Anthem, but that will be good for the studio as a whole. However, I think EA is looking for Bioware to be a long-term part of the company. I think EA really respects that Bioware, what Bioware brings to it. Bioware is a lot different than all the other aspects of its business. So even if Anthem doesn't do as well, and I think it's going to be great, but if it doesn't do Game Busters, I don't think that's the end of Bioware. I think it will simply be a chance for Bioware to learn some lessons and apply it to the next game that comes out. Yet another reassuring comment that Bioware isn't under any pressure to make a hit game like it's their last. In a previous video I made where Casey Hudson sat down with Game Informer, he spoke about their plans after Anthem, which to me sounded like they must not be in a situation where Bioware would be shut down by EA. With all this in mind, I believe that Bioware is really basking in their riches and taking a risk with Anthem that isn't my cup of tea and I hope it does well and make Bioware a lot of money. I want to know what you guys think of the comments made by James Olin. Does this put your fear of Bioware's future to bed or not? Let's talk about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and tap the notification bell to stay updated on gaming news. And I'll talk to you next time, gamers. Peace.